Hello, everybody. We are behind the mic. Gary Laubach, John Leone. Yes, basketball season is ready to go. In fact, as we start talking about the men's basketball team, they, along with John, by the way, will be in Syracuse as John's going home to watch this ball game. John, I, you know, when you were coaching, did you want to put together a schedule that had Syracuse, Penn, Duke, Rutgers, Columbia, Cornell? Or, or is this just masochism as, at its worst? <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's a kind of a, a, a dual question, Gary. Sometimes you have to, obviously, uh, in the modern game with all the money floating around major college mm -hmm. basketball, these are called guarantee games, uh, which means that Lafayette, by playing these uh, power conference schools uh, where you're going to draw 25 or 30,000 people, uh, are going to get a, a little nice stipend pay. for going nice, nice, nice yeah. payday. On the other hand, you look at this schedule, and yeah, this borders, it tips the scale a little bit toward masochism. You've got, I mean, when Rutgers is your is your weak link, you know, and, and you know, sprinkle in. Uh, now, Penn is an Ivy League school, but you've got to go down to the Palestra, mm -hmm. check the mm -hmm. record at the Palestra. So this is an unbelievably challenging early schedule, and it's exacerbated by some of the challenges early on that Fran O'Hanlon's going to face. Well, there's other exasperations, and that's <laughs> the fact that you no longer have Justin Jaworski, you no longer have E.J. Stevens, you no longer have Dylan Hastings. You have lost about 55% of your scoring. They're gone. Uh, so those are numbers that are going to be very difficult to replace. And, and, and the issue is, is twofold. Not only are those the guys you lost, they're all backcourt, except for Dylan, they're backcourt players. Mm -hmm. And when Fran O'Hanlon is at his best, his, his experienced players become his teachers. When you run a passing game, you ignite that passing game, you initiate it through the guards. Tyrone Perry has been out with an, a knee injury. He's back, however. That's great yeah, news. Yeah, yeah. That is great news because Say what you will about E.J. Stevens and Justin Jaworski. They played uh, great minutes, and they put up numbers. You look at those stats, Tyrone Perry never mm -hmm. left the floor. Mm -hmm. Tyrone Perry is your best teacher on the floor. And when I talked to Coach last week, he said, so many of the younger guys are trying to shoot their way into this lineup. You don't do that. You learn the system first. That starts with guard play. So it's great news that Tyrone is back. Uh, and I love a couple of the freshmen they've gotten, too. Yeah, that news just came out as we are taping that. So that is great news. It'll take a while, obviously to get back in basketball shape but he is running around he scrimmaged uh, this week so Tyrone will be on the floor uh, as the season begins and that's great news you look at Kyle Jenkins Leo O'Boyle Neil Quinn I really like the inside you got Sean Good who is a rebounder he's not a scorer but you've got Neil Quinn, who's a passer, rebounder, and scorer. When you look back at Fran O'Hanlon's most successful teams, they've had great center play. Mm -hmm. And I love Neil Quinn. Uh, he's slimmed down a little bit. He's more athletic. He's in great shape. Uh, I think Kyle Jenkins has been flying a little bit under the radar by, uh, uh, by Kyle Jenkins standards. Mm -hmm. I think he's about to explode. We've seen Leo O'Boyle shoot the basketball. The best news is these guys have been in the system. They know the system. And with Tyrone back at the point guard spot, that allows time for young guys like C.J. Tompkins and and Devin Hines. Devin Hines is a find. I think uh, he could easily play at a level higher, uh, but he loved the school. He's a, a terrific student. Uh, he feels like he's found the right place. So look for him to uh, uh, to, to, to contribute. Uh, Fran likes to bring those freshmen along slowly. Uh, that might be accelerated in his case. What you also have to like if you're a player on the Lafayette roster, you're going to see playing time. Fran gets pretty much everybody out on the floor. So even though he has Kyle Jenkins, Leo Boyle, Neil Quinn, they're going to be the foundation, but just about everybody's going to get an opportunity against the likes of Syracuse, Penn, Duke. Yeah, well, no one's going to play 40 minutes, mm -hmm. and, and uh, that, that brings us to Sean Good, who is a, a, a leader, a senior, uh, a, a guy who knows how to play in France system. So he's going to be a key element as well. Chris uh, Rabio is, is, is an, a newcomer uh, who, with, who brings great size mm -hmm. and good shooting mm -hmm. ability. Uh, and and Fran's got some, uh, some quality depth. Uh, again, I, I think given the way Fran used uses his bench and substitutes and rotates players. Um, he'll have his core group of seven or eight guys. But I'll tell you, the success of this team may well depend on how those eight, nine, and tenth players contribute in key moments. It certainly looks like, and we, don't, we haven't said this very often <clears throat> about Lafayette basketball, but it looks like the inside paint area could be their strength. Now if they can find somebody to shoot, and Leo Boyle is certainly capable of that, somebody to hit those threes because that's critical to Fran's offense. It's critical to making the inside players better. And if I could just add one more element. Last night, Syracuse played LeMoyne College in an exhibition game, mm -hmm. LeMoyne, a Division II school. This is a very uncharacteristic Syracuse basketball team. I mean, you talk about Lafayette's inside game. When was the last time we were ever bigger and – well, not bigger – 
stronger than a team inside. Syracuse is a long, lanky team. What Syracuse has, they look more like Lafayette than Lafayette has. They're shooting the lights out. I mean, they've got both Bayheims. They've got a Villanova transfer by the name of Switter, uh, and then Joey Girard, who's a senior. Uh, they're shooting over 40% from three-point range in their exhibition games. So this is a different Syracuse team. It's going to be very interesting. They've got to handle Neil Quinn on the inside. He outweighs anybody Syracuse puts on the floor by 20 pounds. Well, you'll be up there. You can help coach a little bit, maybe, uh, as you watch. Watch that unfold. We will be with you with the men. Uh, not all that often. We'll have Cornell. That'll be our opening game on the Lafayette Sports Network, November 12th. But five of the first six games for Lafayette are away games. John and I are both looking forward to both the men and the women's basketball schedule for 21-22. And we know, or you will, of course, join us on the Lafayette Sports Network. That's the men's basketball team. Just a preview. Thanks to John. I'm Gary Laubach. Thanks for joining us.